Hello and welcome to Nidharanya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play the Beast. Now, this is the Czech version of the game and for the most part no in-game text is needed to explain the game rules. However, in a very few cases where it's really helpful you will see an English text over the Czech text. So, let's get started. To set the game up, first choose the contract. If it's your first game, it's recommended to use either the Great Cleansing or the attack on the Northern Settlements based on the player count. The Great Cleansing is for 2 and a 3 player game, the attack on the Northern Settlements is for the 4 player game. I'm going to demonstrate a 3 player game, so we'll choose the Great Cleansing. The contract determines which map you need to use for the game and also some additional instructions for the setup and the endgame conditions. The Great Cleansing is played on the drenched lands, so place the corresponding side of the map face up. Then place all animals and settlers on all the locations on the map with the corresponding symbol. Shuffle the decks of beastly talents and items and from both decks place three cards face up. Leave some space nearby for the discard pile. Then shuffle the deck of action cards and again leave some space nearby for the discard pile. Then one player chooses a beast and takes the corresponding character mat. Then the character standee summons and places all in front of them. Each other player picks a hunter and takes the corresponding character mat and the standee. And in a two player game one player picks two hunters. Then all players receive the ability cards corresponding to their characters and based on the additional setup instructions on the contract distribute the grudges tokens. The beast player also takes these trail tokens, the beast movement cards, by the way they don't have to be shuffled and optionally you may also take this minimap with the screen and this small location token for easier manipulation with the components I will not use this screen in the video and when you see the players make sure the beast player is at the south end of the map and the hunters should be seated in a such a way that they can easily see the other teammates cards. Then place the beast standee on the beast starting position which is in the center of the map. Then the beast gets to move two steps by playing two movement cards. I will explain how that works in just a moment. But don't move the beast standee because the movement is hidden. You can only mark your movement on your minimap. And obviously these movement cards are placed face down. Only after the beast has moved, each hunter places their standee in any of the settlements on the map. The settlements are marked with this icon. Two or more hunters may choose the same settlement. In this game one player takes the role of a beast facing other players who form a team of hunters. The beast wins if certain number of these settlers are dead. On the other hand hunters win if the beast is dead or if they keep the beast away from these settlements long enough. That means they keep it away for certain number of game rounds. These endgame conditions are stated on the contract and if you see this symbol it refers to any type of settler. These orange settlers are farmers, these blue ones are nobles and for example here's the larger version of that symbol and if this symbol contains a number inside here it's two it means that the beast wins the game if there are at least two settlers dead. On the other hand the hunters win if the beast is dead or if the final knight is reached. Here we have first knight, second knight and then the final knight. That means this particular scenario is played over a series of three rounds. Each round consists of three phases, dawn, day and night and you can find the description of those phases on the game board. The dawn starts the round as the preparation phase. The day is the core of the game where players take various actions and during the final phase, the night phase, you may receive rewards and upgrade your character. 
Now I'm going to explain all those three phases in more detail. During the dawn phase, players will draft the action cards for the upcoming round. In the first round of the game, the action cards have been already shuffled. In all subsequent rounds, take all the cards in the draw pile and in the discard pile and shuffle them together. Then from this draw deck, deal certain amount of cards to each player. In a three player game, you will deal four cards to each player. Now, players will draft these cards. The beast player keeps their cards hidden from the hunters and hunters keep their cards hidden from the beast. However, hunters can see the cards of each other hunter, but they may never exchange the cards between each other. So after you get the cards, look at those cards, choose one of them to keep and pass the remaining cards clockwise to the next player. That means the beast will take their cards pass it to the first hunter, the first hunter passes the cards to the second hunter, and the second hunter passes the cards to the beast. Then again, each player would look at their cards, choose one of them to keep, and pass the remaining cards to the player clockwise. Repeat the process until all players have chosen four cards. With four players, the process is slightly different. Before the start of the draft, Take the top card of the draw deck and place it face down to the beast player. The beast player may always look at that card during the draft. And then deal three cards to each player and perform the standard draft. At the end of the draft, the card that was set aside at the start of the draft will be added to the beast's hand. And finally, in a two player game, deal six cards to both players. However, this time, the beast player will always choose only one card, but the hunter will choose two cards every round of the draft. Then players will swap their hands, and again the hunter player will choose two cards and the beast player just one card. Continue like this until both players have chosen six cards, and now the hunter must assign three cards to one character and three cards to the other character. For the rest of the round, the hunter player will treat both characters as if they would be played by two different players, which means both characters have two separate hands of cards. Then at the end of the draft, place the remaining cards face down near the game board. They are referred to as unused cards and they may be used during the round. During the day, players take turns, always starting with the beast player and then continuing in a clockwise direction. On your turn, you can do one of the following three actions. You can play a card, or pass, or flee. When playing the cards, you may play up to one card with this symbol and up to one card with this symbol. Those symbols are sort of gray and blue circles or the gray and red circles. It doesn't matter what type of cards you play with those symbols, you can play your action cards or the ability cards or beastie talent cards or items. There is always this limit of maximum one card with this symbol and maximum one with this one. You may play fewer cards and when you play those cards all the effects of the cards are optional. I will talk about the specific actions in just a minute, but in general you will be able to move, search the location, attack the other players and so on. The second option on your turn is to pass. When you pass, you don't play any cards, you don't play any actions, you are basically waiting for other players to act and to see what they're going to do. However, you can only pass if you have the fewest number of action cards of all players in the game or if you are one of the players with the fewest number of action cards. Other type of cards are not counted, so your abilities or beastly talents or items are not counted, only the number of the action cards. So for example, in this case, this hunter may not pass because they have four cards while these two players have three cards. And finally, the third option is to flee. With the flee action, you discard one of your cards and it can be a card of any type and move one space. Since you need an action card for each action, if you really need to move and you don't have any card with the movement action, you can use this flee action. Just to clarify, when you flee, you may simply discard one card to flee and that's it. You may not play other cards to do other actions. 
So when you decide to play the cards, you need a card for each action. When you play one of your abilities, you always discard that card next to your player board. That applies to both beast and the hunters. When you play an action card, after you resolve the effects, the card is discarded to the discard pile of the action cards. Similarly, when you play the beastly talent card and resolve the action, discard that card to the discard pile of the beastly talent cards. And again, the same applies to the items. After you play the item card, place it to the discard pile of the items. When you play two cards, one with this symbol and one with the other, you may play them in any order you want. Some beastly talents and items cost grudges to play. If they do, pay the grudges from your personal supply to the general supply. Then some cards have this habitat prerequisite. In order to play this card, your character must be located on the space with the habitat shown. So, for example, you must be on the space with this habitat symbol. This beast's starting location is considered to be the habitat of all types. Then some cards may also have the zone prerequisites. Both maps are divided into several zones. This drenched lens is divided into two zones and the zones are separated with this white line. The beast's starting position belongs to both zones or all adjacent zones. And here you can find the names of each zone. And if the card requires you to be in a specific zone, that means you can only take that action if you are in that zone. In addition, if the card allows you to perform an action in your current zone, meaning you can only perform the action on the spaces in your current zone. And finally, when the cards refer to the current location, with hunters, it always means their current physical location. However, for the beast, it means the current hidden location. The beast's standee is the place where the beast was last seen or located. However, in the meantime, from that location, the beast may have already moved and therefore the beast player can mark the current location with the beast token on the minimap. So when any card effect refers to the beast's current location, it's the actual current hidden location. So that would be here. It would not be the space with the beast's standee. Now I'm going to explain all the actions in the game and we will start with the beast movement. Both the beast and the hunters move along these roads and one step is the movement from one location to the adjacent one. However, when you move the beast, you don't physically move the standee, but if you use the minimap, you can track your current location with the beast token. Now, for each movement step, choose one of your movement cards. You can choose any direction you want, north, south, west or east. Or if you wish so, you can choose the no movement card and stay in your current location. However, you cannot choose the no movement card if you would be in a location with a settler or a hunter. So for example, if in this case we would like to go south to this settlement, I would take the south card and place it face down on top of this stack of movement cards. Then you can also move your beast token on the minimap. If the action card allows you to move more than one step during the same action, simply place as many movement cards on your stack as allowed by the action card and then move your beast token on your minimap. When hunters move, they move their physical standee on the map and again for each movement they move from one location to an adjacent one. Then whenever a hunter moves over the location where the beast has been or currently is, the beast player must place a trail token on that location. The beast standee also counts as part of the trail, so the trail token would be also placed in that location. In order to determine where the beast has been or currently is, take the beast's last known location, which is this location on the minimap, and then consider all the active movement cards. In this example, the beast has moved east, west, south and west. So from here, it was 
east, west, south, and again west. So if any hunter moves over this, this, or this, or this location, the beast player should place a trail token on the game board. And in case you go through the same location more than once, in this case it was east, west again, south and west, so the beast has been in this location twice. If the hunter moves over that location, place that many trail tokens on that location, so in this case it would be two trail tokens. The only exception is the no movement movement card. That card doesn't generate any additional trail tokens. The beast is revealed in its current location if it attacks or when the hunter successfully searches that specific location. So, for example, if the beast player would attack this boar or if any hunter would be in the same location and perform the search action, which is the next action I'm going to talk about. When the beast is revealed, all the current movement cards are shown face up and so the hunters can see the movement of the beast from the last known position based on those movement cards. Then move the beast standy to the current location, remove all the trail tokens and all the movement cards are returned back to the movement cards deck. The beast is considered to be revealed as long as there are no cards in this movement cards area. If the beast is not revealed, but there is a hunter in the same location as the beast's current location, the hidden location, and that hunter performs the search action, the beast must reveal itself. However, if the hunter is not in the same location as the beast and performs the search action and the search is not successful, the beast remains hidden. The next action is the attack action. Hunters can only attack the summons because these summons are always visible on the map and they can only attack the beast if the beast is revealed. Then both the beast and the summons can attack hunters, settlers, animals and also these watchtowers. You can only attack in your current location and every attack deals one damage. Whenever the player is damaged, place a wound token on the corresponding character mat. That applies to both the beast and the hunters. Whenever you damage the animal, settler or the summon, place the wound token beneath it. As long as the beast or the hunter or animals or settlers have the number of wounds equal to their health, that character is dead and removed from the map. You can find the starting health of animals and settlers at the bottom of the map. Some game effects may reward you with the Ancient Power. When you gain the Ancient Power, place the token next to your player board. When you perform the attack action, you may decide to use the Ancient Power token, discard it before you perform that attack, and that will increase the strength of your attack by one. These grudges are important resources in the game. This is the grudge token of value one, this is a token of value three. Hunters gain these grudge tokens as a reward from contracts or from some action cards or items. The beast player can gain these tokens by killing the animals or settlers. However, in order to gain the grudge as the reward for killing the animal or the settler, the beast must deal the last damage to those animals or settlers. If the animal or a settler is killed by the summon, the beast doesn't gain any grudges. When the beast is killed, the game immediately ends and hunters win. When the hunter is killed, the hunter loses all their grudges and items, meaning they are discarded. If the hunter was killed by the beast, the beast will gain one grudge as a reward. In addition, if the killed hunter still had any action cards in their hand, the beast player will randomly choose one of them and add it to their hand. Although the hunter's standee is removed from the map, it will be placed back on the map during the night phase into one of the settlements. Then whenever the nearby word is used, it means not only your current location, but all the adjacent locations to your current location. Since this keyword is used by many cards, don't forget that it also includes your current location. When the hunter is allowed to place a watchtower, 
place the watchtower on your current location, unless stated otherwise. As long as the hunter is standing in the same location as the watchtower, any trails from all nearby locations are placed on the map. Remember, the nearby location also includes the current location. The watchtower doesn't reveal the beast itself, only the trails. Watchtowers can be attacked by the beast or by the summons, and when any amount of damage is dealt, the watchtower is removed from the map. These destroyed watchtowers can be placed back on the map later in the game if you play such an action. All beasts have summon to aid them. You can place or control these summons anytime you take an action with this symbol. When you do, you have two options. You can either place a new summon on the map, or all of your summons already on the map can take one action. When placing a new summon, place it on a location which is up to two steps away from your current hidden location. So not from the location with the beast standing. Furthermore, all the summons have to be placed on the location with a specific habitat shown on the beast's mat. So in our example, it could be, for example, this location. If all of your summons are already on the map and you can place another summon, you may simply take one of those summons and move it to the new location. If any of those summons are killed, you can place it back on the map later in the game when you have a chance to place another summon. Instead of placing a new summon, you can take one action with all of your summons on the map. There are three types of action you can take with the summons, either move one step, or attack for one damage, or use the unique ability of the summon. You can take the actions with your summons in any order you want, and they don't have to take the same action. And remember, if you kill an animal or the settler with the summon, you don't get any grudges. Finally, all of your summons have the starting health of 1. Whenever you are allowed to take the Beastly Talent card or the Item card, you can take one of those three phase-up cards or the card from the top of the deck. Take the chosen card and place it into your hand. Don't refill the empty space, that will happen during the night phase. The deck of item cards and some abilities contain this symbol, which is a special type of cards called traps. These cards still count as the card with this gray and blue circle, but they behave slightly differently than other cards just because they set up the trap. You still have to pay the cost of the card and then choose any zone on the map. So on this side of the map we have two zones divided by this white line. So let's say in our example we will pick this zone and place the chosen trap card face down in that zone. Then choose one habitat token, show it to other hunters but keep it hidden from the beast and place it under that trap card. So the beast player only knows that there is a trap in the corresponding zone, but the beast player should not know what is the effect of the trap and which habitat token has been chosen. Then later in the game, when the beast is revealed in the same zone as the trap, and the beast's location matches the habitat token under the trap, the trap is triggered, reveal the trap, resolve the effect on the trap and then discard the trap. The habitat token is also discarded. If the beast is revealed because it played an attack in that location, the trap is triggered before that attack. If the beast would be revealed in a location which doesn't match the habitat token, nothing happens and the trap still remains in place. Finally, there is a limit of maximum 3 traps per zone and when the beast is currently revealed and you place a trap, the trap is not triggered. Some actions allow you to transform the locations. When the beast transforms a location, place a habitat token of the beast's type on that location. Again, you place it on your current location, not on the location of your standee if you are not revealed. If you can transform all the nearby locations, not only you can transform the current location, but also all the adjacent locations. When hunters transform the location, they transform it to the settlement. And finally, the cards with this symbol are reaction cards. You play these cards on your opponent's turn, 
and each reaction card has a prerequisite specifying when and how you can use this card. Don't forget to pay the grudge as well. When during the day phase, all players pass consecutively, which usually happens when no player has any action cards or when the players have equal number of action cards, the day phase is over and the night phase is triggered. Perform the following steps in this exact order. First, check for the contract rewards. This is the column for the beast, this one is for the hunters. Each side has the requirement and the corresponding reward. If you fulfill that requirement, you get that corresponding reward, and if the requirement has this white line, completing one of those requirements is enough to gain the reward. If both the beast and the hunters fulfill the requirements, resolve the beast first and hunters second. Hunters that have been killed this round don't receive any rewards. During the first night, check for the requirements and rewards in the first row. During the second night, you can gain the reward if you achieve those requirements during the second day or even during the first day. So that means the requirement for the second night has to be fulfilled until the end of the second day. It doesn't have to be specifically during the second day. One last note, you gain the reward only once, even if you fulfill that requirement more than once. Then, if you still have any action cards in your hand, you have to discard them. Then all the abilities you have played in the previous round are returned back to your hand. Then discard all the phase-up beastly talent cards and the phase-up item cards and draw new three cards phase-up. However, the item cards and the beastly talent cards in your hand remain in your hand. And then restore the health, remove all the womb tokens from all the animals and all the settlers on the map. And if any hunter has been killed during the round, return that hunter back to the map by placing the standee in any settlement of your choice. And finally, both the beast and the hunters may unlock their upgrades on their player boards. All those upgrades have the number inside the circle, that's the cost of that upgrade, and you have to pay the cost of those upgrades with grudges. And after that, place the upgrade token into that slot. And even if the cost is zero, you still have to unlock that upgrade during the night. And all these red upgrades are permanent passive effects. These yellow upgrades are immediate one-time effects. So after upgrading, resolve that effect immediately. The beast always gets to upgrade the first, then all the hunters. You can unlock as many upgrades as you want or as you can afford. And with that, the night phase is over. So that's how you play the beast. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or clicking the thank you button under the video. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash